Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 6, Network Topologies. Ooh. Let us begin. So you can see we've almost finished the syllabus for this unit. We've just got this one at the bottom here, which is Star and Mesh Network Topologies. As we should all know, networks work in essentially the same way. A computer on the network prepares the signal to send to another device, which is located by an address of some sort, an IP address, a MAC address, whatever. The signal is then placed on a transmission medium, for example, a fiber optic cable or some form of wireless medium. However, networks can be laid out in different ways. The physical layout of a network is called its topology, the network topology. And this physical layout will affect the cost and performance of the network. Remember, each device connected to a network is called a node. That can be a workstation, a tablet, a printer, a PC, anything like that. Although there are lots of different ways to arrange nodes in a network, we're going to concentrate on the two most important ones in the modern era star network topologies and mesh network topologies. But as you can see, there are lots of different topologies that we've used over the years for different reasons. Before we look at star and mesh network topologies, I'm going to look at a couple of the older topologies we don't really use anymore. And the reason for this is pretty simple. When we look at star and mesh topologies, I'm going to explain their good points, their advantages. And you have to understand what are these good points in comparison to? Well, these are in comparison to older topologies, like a bus or a ring network. So in the past, one of the types of topology we might have used was a ring network topology. Data travels around the ring in one direction. It's sent from node to node. So a fault with any node or any connection between the nodes will bring down the entire network. Another topology that people might have used was a bus or a line network topology. A signal from the source travels in both directions to all the machines connected to the bus cable until it finds the intended recipient. A fault with the network backbone will disrupt the entire network. Neither of these network topologies are commonly used now. They're simply not reliable enough. They also had very bad security. So for example, when they were sending a message through the network, that message, that data, would go to every single computer. And any sort of error on any computer device, any sort of error with the backbone infrastructure could bring down the entire network very simply. Let's look at some of the more common topologies used today that we need to know for our course. The first one is the star network topology. And if you have a look at this kind of classic image of a star network topology, you can see how it got its name. It looks like a star. The star topology is the most common network layout. All nodes are connected to a central node, typically a switch or a hub. So if you remember, switches or hubs are the devices that we use to join together uh, physical local area networks. Typically, we use switches nowadays because switches are intelligent. They only send the data on to the computer that requires it, whereas hubs were uh, less smart devices. They would send data to every computer they were connected to. The star topology is frequently used in homes, offices, schools, and many other situations. So why might we use a star network topology? Well, it's fast. Each node has its own connection to the center. It's reliable. If a fault occurs in any one link, other links are not necessarily affected. Data collisions are also less frequent as the data is only directed to the intended computer. So you look at this diagram here, you've got a little explanation of what a data collision is. So one workstation is sending data, another workstation is sending data at the same time, those packets of data collide and data is lost. That's not gonna really happen very frequently on a star network topology because each computer has its own connection to that central switch. Star networks are also scalable. It's easy to add or remove nodes. You also have the idea that the switch can screen data packets, rejecting any that are corrupt, which can increase security overall on the network. The major disadvantage of the star topology is that if that central switch fails, the whole network goes down. Star networks tend to be found in large organizations such as schools and businesses. They're also found in home networks, especially those that are wireless. With all of the devices connecting to a central router with a built-in wireless access point. 
It is important to note that star network diagrams can appear to look very similar to client server networks, but these are not the same. So you have to look at diagrams and tests very carefully. You have to read questions carefully as well, because a star network topology and a client server network architecture, the basic diagrams look very similar but they're not the equivalent, they're not the same thing. The devices in a star network topology could run applications in either a client server or peer-to-peer -peer model. So a star network doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna run in a client server architecture. It could run peer-to-peer. -to -peer. Today we're looking at topology and topology refers to how nodes are physically connected. Whereas the architecture, the network architecture, refers to how these computers communicate and how they share resources. Again, slightly different meanings. Don't get them confused. Moving on, let's look at the mesh network topology. That's the other major topology that you need to know for the OCR GCSE. And there's two different kind of forms of mesh network. We've got the full mesh and the partial mesh, which you can see in this diagram. A mesh topology uses direct connections between the nodes. Each node on a mesh topology has multiple connections via the other nodes to each node on the network. A full mesh has direct connections between each node. A partial mesh has certain nodes connected to exactly one other node, but some nodes are connected to two or more nodes. So again, we have that example here. You can see we've got a full mesh topology. Don't know, for some reason, we're getting kind of lines kind of randomly appearing here. I'm not sure why but you can see each node is connected to every other node on the network. Whereas with the partial mesh, you can see this one is connected to two, and this one is connected to two as well. This one is connected to three. So you can see it's not quite a full topology. What are the advantages of a mesh topology? Well, there's no need for a central switch. Having no central switch means there's no single point of failure. So there's no one device or one connection that can break the network. If that computer goes offline, doesn't matter. If that connection is broken, doesn't matter. There's no central point here that is responsible for gathering together all the connections. Data can be sent directly between nodes or can be routed via other nodes. This ability to send signals via multiple paths makes the mesh topology a very reliable one. For example, the military and emergency services, such as the police and the fire service, often use mesh topologies to avoid any breakdown in communications. The major disadvantage is that a fully mesh wired network would be insanely expensive to implement. In fact, if you were trying to do a full mesh with this network, not only would you need a huge amount of cables, every single device would need its own switch or hub. So you wouldn't just have one switch or hub, you'd have multiple ones. Every single device would require its own switch to connect all those cables together. That's just not feasible. It's incredibly expensive and difficult to network. So it would be far more efficient to use a mesh topology with a wireless network. You don't have to worry about switches. You don't have to worry about cables. A wireless mesh network offers both excellent range and is very robust. As with star network topologies and client server, please remember that mesh network diagrams can look very similar to peer-to-peer -peer networks. But again, they're not the same thing. A mesh topology can support a client server network model or one of these devices is the server. So just because something is a mesh topology doesn't mean it's going to be peer-to-peer. -peer. It could be client server. In summary, the physical layout of a network is called its topology. The two topologies that you have to study for this level are the star topology, where all the nodes are connected to a central point, and the mesh topology, where all nodes are involved in the transmission of a message. Well, that's all we have time for today. I hope you gained something from that. Any questions, please let me know uh, down at the bottom there. And apart from that, I will wish you all a very good day.